one is to define gender in the it is associated meanings. The second one is uh, describing gender in the context of fields. And the overall identifying gender based violence and explanation explains factors affecting women's health. So these are the objectives we are going to uh, cover this introduction to gender for this class. So how do you define sex and the gender? Are they the same or different? You can respond on chat and uh, let me see your response. Are they the same or different? If they are different, what makes them different? And uh, if they are the same, what are the common characteristics? Can we make sex and the gender as the same one? Anyone? Are they the same? So commonly, they are uh, in some cases people are using interchangeably. So we need to differentiate sex and the gender, whether they are different or the same. So anyone who can have a reflection on this one? Yes, they are different. Okay, this is the way we are understanding sex and the gender, and we need to differentiate for those who are using gender and uh, sex interchangeably. So as you are now responding, they are different. And uh, so they are different. So as a definition, we will have uh, sex is a biological classification of men and the women, which is naturally gifted. And uh, it is not also being male and the female is not a choice of an individual. It is a natural, a naturally given uh, phenomena for someone. We call it sex. And uh, at the same time, it is determined at birth based on biological characteristics. And uh, this is some of the, the nowadays and case of modernization, they want to change the sex. Rather, they are changing the sex. They are not going to change the internal structures of the individual, but it is uh, determined at birth where the genetics are made, make up of to make it a sex, male sex and the female sex to be in a different way. And at the same time, when we are saying sex, it is universally the same for all human beings. Being male and the female is given for everywhere. It is not different for Africa. It is not different for American. Americans, it, it is not different for Asians. So it is universally given for human beings to be male and the female, and the female sex one. And uh, even though people are trying to change it, it is hard to change. As I have said before, they probably change it, the characteristics, they want to make it uh, different but it is not totally difficult to change the sex of an individual. So this is as, uh, what we call it a sex. And uh, when we come to gender, 
uh, gender is in general and um, in the majority it is defined by culture. Uh, so as we know that cultural practices we have everywhere in the world it has different from one continent to another continent from one country to another country and specifically if we come to ethnic groups even different ethnic groups have different cultural practices they are doing in the society so this is the given the given one and it is defined by culture commonly so this culture gives them some of the set of roles for uh, male and the set of roles for female and also they try to classify duties performed by male and the female in different uh, categories and at the same time to the extreme to the right of the individuals it is also have some of the limitations on distribution of the rights to have for everything even for male and the female in different uh, aspects and in this case also the responsibilities are giving for like when we take it a gender in a case of right who is going to decide who is going to have a role to rearing a child and who are having to make a household duties these are the role and the duties responsibilities given based on the gender in different aspects of the cultures and uh, related with with this one also male have different responsibilities in different cultures and the women or female have different responsibilities in different cultures. So the good thing, every duty and the rule right is given by this gender aspect, accepted by a society, that they are not normally practicing and considering it as a norm in the that specific society. Because of that, it is majority of the societies are accepting that behavior. Uh, related with the male and the female provided for that one. In addition to that one, uh, gender also have a, a relationship between powers. In addition to the role and the responsibilities, power is also related with the gender responsibility given for men. Uh, women and the gay boys and the girls. It starts from the beginning when we are starting to growing a child from the child age to the adult age, and then they started to practice the society's habits and try to develop that uh, practices to be um, uh, as a norm of that specific society. So, like being submissive in female and being aggressive in case of men are acceptable, and that cause also imbalance between power relation of male and the female and at the same time very across cultures and over time so in some of the societies that that culture is more stronger than the other one and more practiced in some of the cultures of the society and in some of the others that may, may be liberal when we are comparing the same specific uh, duties and the rights given for the gender. So when we are looking at this one, uh, they are totally different. Even in case of the gender, gender is attached to that of the sex classification given by the natural one. So because of this, both are different from sex and the gender are different from the different perspectives we have in this one. So once we have seen this one, uh, shall you try this uh, exercise before we go to the detail? Think as far back as possible in your life and write down your first experience of realizing that you are different from members of the opposite sex. Like if you are me, my, my, what is the difference? What feeling is did you have at that time when you are appreciating the, your difference from the other opposite sex? So the same thing you can uh, respond it in a chat like how old you are where when you are realizing that you are different from these sexes and like male are different from uh, female and uh, what responsibilities are involved in that one and is there any specific incident is encountered at that time 
So it is um, think of it and it is good to share with us to have what people are giving a meaning for this uh, issues. Even you can uh, you can you can explain about what do you feel about when you are joining this university and have experiences with different religions, situations, and ethnicity. What experiences do you feel? And if you have any discussion related with the gender responsibilities in different areas of Ethiopia, you can share that one also. Like what? What do you feel when uh, your parents or your uh, communities are saying this is not the duty of male and uh, this is not the duty of female, rather? So what do you feel about that one when you heard about this for the first time? Can you share with us any one of you? Did you accept it as a norm, or did you get feel hunger? Or did you did you explain it uh, or oppose the ideas about the expectation from different gender or sex again? Anyone? So everyone is happy to be differently given a responsibility and a role in the community as a male and a woman. I Tamara, chai samachu? No. No, I don't finish the mission. Okay, if even though you are not um, able to answer this question, uh, I advise you to try to realize this information and uh, try to answer and discuss in between of you about this one because sometimes we can consider it as a normal and we can also make it as a norm but when we are digging related with the different aspects of uh, responsibilities and the duties especially our relationship and the decision making power they have their own effects of the involvement of male and the female in that of uh, the point is we need to discuss gender so these are some of the points why we are going to talk about gender issues in specifically when we come to health so these are has its own influence on the expectation we need to have in case of patient management. Like if she is shy and if she has not given equal confidence to reflect her feeling and at the same time also make her decision by herself, this has its own effect when we are treating a patient, how they are explaining themselves and how they are going to decide or agree with the decision given by the physician to engage uh, that specific patient is. So that is why we are dealing with gender in this case. So there are some distinction points where we are going to differentiate sex and the gender. And as we said before, sex refers to the biological characters. Dr. Mirulay, interacting. 
ጥያቄ ይችላል በቻት መመለስ አይደለም ሰንቆት ይችላል Okay, sex uh, refers to biological characteristics as we defined before, and uh, being male in the female is different in chromosomes. So that's why it is hard to change the sex always, and anatomically, hormonally, the reproductive system, including psychological components, are very, uh, very difficult to change. It. So uh, cosmetically, people may change their sex. But when we come to the biological characteristics of sex, it is hard to change again to from male to female or from female to male. However, when we come to gender, uh, as we said before, it is a prescribed one and given by the specific society for the specific responsibilities and the roles. So if we are working hard, we can change that duty and the responsibilities. So gender is commonly referred to the social, social responsibility given by the society to the specific sex. Culturally, as you said, it is acceptable in some of the cultures. That one, that specific practice may not be uh, acceptable in other culture. And so, if we agree in positive way. And if we want to make it in a beneficial use of that specific role in the responsibility, we can change the norm of the social society and the cultural practices, even though it takes time. So in general, we can change the practices related with gender in the specific social and the cultural aspect is uh, linked for, given for the responsibility of the woman and uh, the female. Uh, so in general, sex makes male and the female, but gender makes us uh, masculine or feminine. So that, that's why uh, male are always aggressive and they are taking action and they are also making feeling that they are powerful. So that's what gender gives them the responsibility to, to do so. And how they are growing up in the specific society to do so some so sex is an ascribed status because a, per, a person is born with it and as we said it is given at birth and no one is changing that uh, to another aspect but in case of the gender we can change it this one so like uh, cooking is given for only for female in the specific cultures but male can do that one easily so if we can do on that one, we can change every aspect which are beneficial to make it gender responsibility in the power relationship equal. And uh, sometimes also we need to think about nature and the nurture. How nature uh, influences sex and how nurture also influences sex in the gender. So naturally, we have already given a sex with male and the female with the specific characteristics. And uh, at the same time also there is nurturing where people are try to change and they try to modify what is already given by nature. So we need to think about how much of the gender part can be nurtured and how much parts of the part of the nature can be nurtured. And the commonly the gender part is the nurtured one. And in this nurtured one, we can determine based on the specific practices related with the gender in the specific society. Like how much is determined by nurture and the environment or the culture in which we live and learn. And if we work on, we try to intervene on the environment and the culture of that specific, we can change the gender or we can nurture the gender in a positive way. But in case of the nature, there are some limitations we are going to do. We cannot do to change nature. So this is also the characteristic given for uh, women and the person and uh, uh, 
Mm, I think if you can answer it, like if you by one by one, and uh, one of the characteristics given for a woman is woman has to be gentle all the time, and she may not be aggressive, and she may not be hard poker, and she may not be also aggressive than other than being gentle. So this is sometimes natural. It seems in some of the cultures, and in in some of the cultures, it is a nurture type. And which is not uh, given by nature, but she can be she can be uh, talkative and she can be also decision maker. And always, we are not expecting women to be gentle. So women can be heavy loads. So this is also another duty. This is related with the duty given for the woman, and this is also how we can nurture. We can. Uh, make a woman can carry heavy loads like men if she had uh, a muscle strength like a man and they are having an exercise <laughs> she can do that one and also that's also one of uh, the things we need about that so, so one thing i want to add on the gentleness so when we come to consequence of health science as we described before like if she is gentle and she is not expected to decide by herself and she is not expected to explain what she feels and if she is not expected to speak by herself even that makes the difference when we are looking for health related issues some of um, the point is in detail like if we take for number five women are sensitive uh, where the people are always taking this one for women are sensitive, that means they are react emotional, they are reactive, and they are non uh, uh, none of uh, making decision and uh, taking time for the decision. So that is totally not true, and uh, we are this is also an unexpected activity given by the mother. So men are risky takers. This is also dangerous for the man to take a risk all the time, which can put them in poor health conditions at the end of the day. And these are the points I want to raise and uh, are independent like. So uh, this gives them more power to be this, uh, to make a decision rather than women, and they are unable to make a negotiation. So there is a role given for the woman. And if the man is an, an independent to do everything, always it is in the other way it considers that women are dependent on men. So this may this has not always true, and uh, sometimes they have the mutual understanding to make a decision by men and by women but always men have also women have also the same power and the same ability to decide and to be dependent so these are some and um, to to keep our time and uh, women are good at caring why not men if we give uh, this responsibility for a man they are probably they are more caring than women. So if you observe nowadays, uh, children are probably more like to love their dad than their mom. So that makes, the, that difference comes from the caring. If the, the father is caring for the child, the same that for that of the mother, they have the same responsibility to be loved by their children. So these are some of some few of the responsibilities given for gender aspects rather than related with sex of an individual. So in this case, if we nurture this one, when we are comparing with the nature and the nurture, if we nurture these activities, we can change the gender role and the responsibilities with this uh, aspect. So there are also some things, um, because Simon and the uh, Beaver family claimed that one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. 
and that is socially discrimination producing the woman moral and intelligence effect so profound that they appear to be caused by nature. But this one is not caused by nature. It is described by this social, the cultural aspects of that specific society. And this is not nurture. It is not nature as this aspect is nurture. So being male and female can change it with that, that of the relation of gender. Uh, in other aspects, we have also feminist groups. So these feminist groups are extremely uh, arguing for the right of the woman <clears throat> that suggests to be equally considered as a man. And um, especially in a social science groups, this one is a very strong one. And the people are extremely going for being feminist, joining feminist group and uh, advocating for gender equality. So this, in this, this group argument is against biological determinants suggested by gender difference. Rather, they are resisting and arguing all the time and discussing to make a difference uh, be known among the male and women in case of uh, gender, because one of the main point is it is not biologically determined. So as we said before, if it is biological mind, still it is difficult to change this biological determination. But as we discussed, gender is nurturing of the responsibility for this classification given in relation with sex, not that of the sex issues. They are trying to argue that point. It is not biologically determined. So if that's not, we can try to change, we can make it positively fairness coming from this discussion, and they try to argue all the time when they are going to case about gender issues. So the final one they said is it is socially constructed, but not biologically determined. So if it is socially nurturing, okay, nurturing can also bring a change. So we need to argue all the time against this social constructed prescription given for male in the main in the case of responsibility. <clears throat> uh, as we said before in the definition, uh, is gender uniform? What do you think? Like in Ethiopia, if you take a gender, if you understand the gender aspect is, is it uniform in uh, Oromia, in Tigra, in Hamara, in SNNP, if you think about that? And if you tell us some of the examples from each of them, like what the gender role or responsibility given in Oromia for women, is all the ways diff different or the same with that of the responsibility given for women in Amara region? try to compare these regions based on the duties and the responsibilities given for women. Is that the same? Like a simple one related with the um, age of marriage. Is that a gender issue or a sex issue? Okay, my question is that, like, now we are talking about uniformity of gender in Ethiopia and different regions. Like, rather than talking about ethnic group, let us talk about the regions. So if we take early marriage, is early marriage is gender-related or sex-related? 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, it is gender gender related, like in in uh, some of the areas, like if we take Amahara, early early child marriage be, will be accepted by the society, and there are cultural practices to marry their um, child early before 18 years, uh, which uh, which is already recommended by Ethiopian legal aspect of age of marriage. But in, when it comes to Addis Ababa, that may not be a cultural practice. In Addis Ababa, to get married before 18 years. So that's one is gender related and expected to have also business that of the society given for the individuals. Like in other sports, so we can compare that makes it uniform or ununiform for the gender to be practiced. So um, there are different gender related issues practiced in asia and there are gender related uh, practices practices in africa which uh, which does not make it uniform so gender is not uniform and even in a specific uh, culture and ethnic groups there are within the same region in our country they may have different aspects of uh, practices related with this one so general when we are generally talking about this one it is uh, incontestable that means it is not constant for everyone like biological science but it can be typically different from place and from um, region to region so women have been defined by comparison race national so this is one of the gender related issues given for the woman as they can say they are less rational that means they cannot argue they cannot justify what they want to do and also they are not resisting uh, given for any given responsibility and the duty for them uh, that's why they cannot rationalize and uh, some say they are more playful which is more practiced by more and men than women and uh, they are closer to nature more nurturing less aggressive these are some of the examples given to women as this time so if you are looking at these characteristics this may not be uniformly distributed everywhere in the world some of um, the character may be specifically given for some uh, regions or some specific areas of the country and that may not be also when we talk about the implementation the practice the depth of the strangers of the practice is also different from place to place so in this case gender is not uniformly practiced uh, the other issues women have been seen as those who are other than what has been thought to be other than human man so the primary uh, every primary potential in the benefit is given for man and the women are considered as others so this is also does not make uniform the uh, practice of gender in every aspect of the area so is it useful to differentiate sex in the gender what do you think is it useful if you distinguish gender and uh, sex why so if you, if it is uh, they not distinguished we cannot argue about the gender and uh, we will expect it to accept every responsibility duties and uh, right is given for being male and the female but what do you think if it is useful you can use the point is written there 
like is it useful to have for the body for the mind of the individual to be differentiating i am male and uh, i have these responsibilities in relation to the gender and uh, she is a female and uh, she has a responsibility due related with these duties and responsibilities does it have a meaning for the mind and the body of the individual to be built culture, nature, emotional of individuals. Yeah, I think it is use, useful to distinguish between gender and um, sex. Uh, because if we if we try to different this differentiate this uh, sex and the gender, always we have to uh, we can avoid uh, unfairness and uh, loading of the individuals with different activities and uh, also being exercised here or its right is to be practiced in that specific community. So always it is good to distinguish between sex and the gender for that community, especially when we come to health, they have to have the right to get a service every time they want to get a service. They have to have the right to decide on the resources they want to use for health. And at the same time also they want to, they have to have a right with the responsibilities and the duties given for a female or for male to distinguish and to resist the information they have about that one. So some of the, there are some of the critics or comments given on the gender issues and um, like uh, in our country, there are many practices related to the genders. We have gender office, we have um, gender, use in the child ministries as a ministry at the same time and there are so many different uh, gender aspects in our country practice in, uh, currently so can you have any comment about that gender practices in our thesis rather than the community based you can comment on the practices we have at the office level or at the ministry level what they are doing and what they want to do and what they have to do. First, let us start. What comments do you have about them? Any comment? Any comment? Are they are doing their duties and the responsibilities as expected? or they are abusing the rights given for them, or they are reflecting the objectives and the targets and the goals of this gender office and the gender ministries. Can you comment about that? So, okay, the question is about any comment do you have on gender related activities in Ethiopia? To make it short. Any comment? Yeah, you can think in institutions, offices related with gender.
Okay, yeah. I saw your uh, reflections on this one, and uh, yes, some of your reflections are very right. Yeah, I mean, I'll dominate. <laughs> so are you sure more are the more who are dominating now? Okay. Yes, I agree. Okay, I agree with some of your reflections, and uh, it is very right. And uh, they are not expecting some of one of the comments is that they are not expecting what is expected from them, and um, even though they are not doing as this what is expected, it is going to be changed from time to time, and uh, more working on that areas. So this uh, critics is not only for our cases and Ethiopian, Ethiopian cases, all over the world, there are many critics and the comments about gender uh, issues, especially when we come to those of uh, feminist groups. There are different comments and the critics about uh, gender issues. So here are some of the comments uh, or critics given related with uh, gender. The first one is commitment, since many ordinary social agencies view their gender to be a source of poverty value. So being having an agenda of a gender in a, in a place makes them as a valuable source of their uh, contribution as well as their benefits and opportunities to do things. I think that gender is doing this one and uh, gender is also related as the source for positive values. The other one is that uh, ordinary social agents find this in it given that sex and the gender are not distinguished. So when someone is um, like, if you uh, for um, some of the opportunities or a vacancy given to be competitive, uh, they think that for being female may give them that opportunity to be recruited and they are over using these gender issues in that in such cases by having not distinguished between sex and the gender so as you know in our case like we have the uh, an affirmative actions for university interns as the same as also in different offices there are some of affirmative actions like three to five percent is to be provided for a woman for being competitive in a, a working and an educational uh, activities but that is expected not expected to be misused so if we take uh, for example a comment is given for an affirmative action for university interns for a people people are not um, taking it positively but th that one is to compensate the time they are the time share they are wasting for other duties rather than for educational activities when compared to male and that one is given for action to be compensate their duties and the responsibilities they waste their time there but this is also another education point where people are not agree with that one even some of the uh, advantages a female students may not accept this one because they have time, they have the resource, and probably their families have able to manage their time accordingly to get time for their education rather than other duties. Uh, the other uh, critics is the category of women that is individually collected not to behind them together. So once they meet together, they can talk about uh, gender issues, but when they go back, no one is going to follow that issue to be implemented or to be practically uh, shown in that specific community. As I've said, feminists must understand them in some sense. It is not possible to conceptualize oppression 
as a system structure in the institution process. So uh, in this case, the feminist is criticized that always we have to make it systematic and we have to make it structural and it has to be institutionally installed, like gender mainstreaming. What we are talking about is gender mainstreaming. It has to be systematically mainstreamed. At the same time, it has to also has an instruction in the system to be provided for them. And at the same time, institutions have to also acknowledge, accept it, and consider it in every uh, duties and the processes they have all the time. So these are also one of the tools they are giving about the gender. Uh, sex assignment is not making a descriptive claim, but a normative one. So this is, as we concluded, it is natural, given at birth, and it is a normative one. We cannot make it change over this one by nurturing, but this has to be acceptable. Everyone should accept, but sometimes we are arguing not to accept the sex as it is. Um, even when we are discussing about gender and the sex, sex cannot go and not be functional without the contextual uh, in, uh, activities we are doing culturally and socially that gives meaning for the gender as to be also acknowledging the sex of someone to be included in that society. They have to be socially constructed related with the gender. So, for example, some sex assignment is always in some sense position, but that may not be uh, good if you are not considering other sex related conditions with that of uh, male or female. And that may make it again a suspicion between classification of duties and And when related with the bodies, at the same time, in addition to social and the cultural practices, there are some backgrounds which make them like speech axis we have being male and the female bodies that can be structured and deformed by hormonal changes during, uh, for male and the women in different ways, like during adolescence and adults and old ages. These are different aspects we are acknowledging in case of uh, uh, gender, like uh, men, men can be fertile until the end of their life, even though the body of the sperm and uh, the being fertility is decreasing. But women have a time to get uh, menopause once she gets into the age of the age limit is given for the reproduction. But sometimes we are arguing to pass this one, which makes related with that of the gender. Why not female may not give birth uh, after the age limit given for the woman? So this is uh, the, sometimes we need to differentiately make it useful differentiation of gender and the sex in addition to the practices and uh, the social and the cultural activities we are doing in the society. So particularly, sometimes we need to argue beyond the sex. And at the same time, we are making the sex role and the responsibilities to be discussed as a gender responsibility. So these are very totally different and sometimes it is good to differentiate sex and gender as it is. Uh, <clears throat> so as I've said before, gender is uh, constructed independently of race, class, ethnicity. This is also uh, not true because as we said, it is not uniform. Specific regions and the specific countries, specific cultures have specific uh, practices related with the gender, but they may not have different sexes with that of the different regions and the different countries. So considering this one is uh, independently is also not totally true. So some of the races have the specific there for themselves and some does not have a uh, specific for some of the services. So always we have to look gender is um, embedded in this like in different classifications and the different uh, characteristics of a society and an individual so it has to be uh, this is one of the critics where people are also differentiated 
the gender responsibility. So when we come to characteristics of gender, we may have some of uh, the characteristics we, ne we need to classify on the characteristic, like uh, gender is in case of relational, socially constructed, in hierarchical power relation, unequal power relation associated with what is uh, masculine and the feminine. So it makes an hierarchical changes to this one. Change, when we consider in a change, changes over time, potential for modifications of development, intervention, uh, which is not possible in that of the sex. Uh, yes, it is context, context specific. We are also discussed it is different from region to region, from place, country, and it even ethnic groups. And institutionalized. Social, uh, social system that is supported by value, legislation, and the religious. So in a society, we there may be some of the values given for that specific duty and responsibility related with uh, religion, gender, and the value related with other uh, in the society. <coughs> to make it institutionalized, all the legislation has to be there. And the, we have to have more mainstreaming systems about the gender issues in all aspects. So these are the kind of more specific that are expecting to have a gender. So when it comes to gender-related concepts, so this is a we are already discussed about, and the gender socialization is a process. And uh, men learn the proper ways of a woman or a man thinks about the woman. And we have to think about that. And at the same time, gender is a process. Gender is a socialization in a specific countries, in a specific society, and uh, even ethnic groups. And at the same time, gender is a process. So as we said before, once a child is given some of the specific responsibilities at child age, and uh, it is, she is told that this is the specific duty given for being male or female, they are trying to uh, make it growing up in the society, practicing and make it implementing until their old age. So that is a process. They are going to pass through what people are learning to through their responsibility given for different aspects of the society. And these are almost the same. Some of the characters make women good and the uh, men and the women good and some of the characters makes them bad so people may give the responsibilities uh, based on this one and they are looking for some of the issues we are discussing now and uh, these are i think they are more common like um, a good woman should have passive emotional soft and deferral, quite shy, beautiful, brought up to confirm and dependent. These are good characteristics given for a woman, and also there are some characteristics given for men. But these are all of these are not related with nature, nature, but they are more with that of the nurture, which is related with the gender. And when we are just defining the status, uh, the status is known, a person occupies and the trait is like being uh, male or female may have different statuses for different uh, duties and the responsibilities. And at the same time, social norms are also the same thing, which is behavior specific situations and the specific people. And the stereotypes are oversimplifying concepting that people who occupy the same status certain traits in common. Stereotypes, in case of some, like if we take uh, the professions, like driving is given for a man, and uh, washing is given for a woman, which is stereotypes related with the woman and the men in that specific society. And uh, that's sometimes used for discrimination against for some of the genders and the specific in a specific groups, they are describing that uh, like if someone is man and he can drive, 
or he can go to a military <clears throat> and uh, he can so when we come to the health profession a woman may not be a surgeon so the some of this is for example i am talking about the example but not naturally what is happening so this is the stereotypes we are providing for gender related issues so in general when we come to gender roles as social constructed uh, uh, in case of women, women are expected social roles. At the same time, also they have main roles in the society. So, so gender social roles are related with interpersonal relationships. How male are going to act in the society and how women are going to act in the society. And there are also some expectations from that of the behavior and the actions they are doing. They are expecting more what what they are already given for those specific say, gender related issues and it is also sometimes shared by religion and the cultural norms and the values in that specific society so the roles are clearly understood by all members of the society because of that no one is questioning about why that is given for her or that is given for him so this is the gender role constructed in the socially and they are expected to practice and accept it to get into uh, the society. But in addition to social uh, role, in case of women, if we come to gender role, there are also productive roles. Uh, activities carried out by men and the women, like in job opportunity, in uh, occupational positions and the involvement of in different aspects of the work, that's as the productive roles are also given for in gender related aspects. So that like uh, who is more fit for uh, selling goods? Who is more benefiting from production of goods? Like if we take uh, an example, and that one is a, a role given for the production of where men and the women are involved in that. The other one is reproductive law. Uh, this one is in general in every society, the majority of reproductive role is given for women. Like she has to get pregnant, she has to breastfeed, she has to rearing a child, she has to caring for the family. And this is mostly given for uh, women. And that's also one of the drawbacks that gives for the women not to be involved and actively competing in equal value for that of the male uh, partner. And the other fourth one is about community managing role. So this is in, in the reverse of the reproductive role. Community managing role is more in the majority given for the male, even though the women are expected to involve in this managing role like uh, undertaking primarily by women, that's a community level. There are given activities already provided for the women to be uh, undertaking by them. And like, uh, and they are more commonly, even though they are involved in the managing roles in the community, they are involved in unpaid work. And that means they are providing for free and uh, in voluntary basis. For example, if we take um, serving as a guard, a woman are always protecting children and protecting her uh, family, and she is doing protection activities, but she is not paid for that. But if the individual is taking a position of a guard, he is expected to be paid, and uh, he had also uh, waste his time with that of the income generating activities. So in, in case of this one also, there are community roles considered for women. Uh, like in community policy, politics, politics role. So there are different levels of politics in the community. And this is primarily taken by men. Managing role is given by women in general, but in politics cases, men are being a chair of um, the social groups, a chair of uh, Kabale, a chair of uh, 
goat or somewhere, the chair of one. If you take every committee and uh, every activity involvement, men are more involved to be uh, a chair or a primary responsible for that activity. This is given by gender, but if it is an opportunity given for a woman, she can also do that one, the same to that one. So in general, woman has about triple role, like she has the social, reproductive, and the productive responsibility. So these are the general activities or a triple role given to the woman. Uh, so when we talk about uh, socialization, how gender is socialized in the community? Uh, there are maintains of gender socialization that the assumption that it's a perception about gender in the society is the root cause for socialization of uh, gender in a specific society. How they are assuming gender, what attitudes they have about the gender, and how do you perceive? So this is the majority, the root, the root of difference of about gender conception and the socialization is in the society. So when we think about what about what are the exercises related with the gender in that specific community, the exercise is seen in a, publicly what is practiced and what is involved in every different aspect is of gender issues. This one is the trend what people are doing on that one. And that doing what is going to be happened in that specific activity. But when it comes to the what is the consequence or the result of practicing, exercising gender-related activities as a trend, so the consequence is becoming a fruit. So like if we give some responsibilities and then hide some of the other responsibilities from men to females, what will happen? Also, what will benefit from this one? If the woman is not making a decision when she gets sick, so what is the consequence? She may delay from the getting the health services from the specific facility. So that is the consequence or the fear we are talking about that one. But that's more power is given by the society as a root for the men, which is considered as independent decision maker and uh, have a, power, a full power to implement, to decide everything to be done. And the community is exercising, but the fruit may not be good for that one. So these are the three ways how gender is socialized in the society with the relation to this one. So who is practicing this one? Who is socializing gender? The first one is family. As we said, from birth, they start to get it and to involve it in the responsibility and the duty given for them because it is a gender is the process as, as we discussed before. So they start to grow in, continue to be in adult life and they continue to be old age. So the second one is community. Community is also another part of the socialization which accepts the practices of that specific uh, activities given for the gender related and they form a strife to make it in, in the community. So political structures, available political structures, if they give different aspects and uh, occupational statuses and uh, educational status and also job opportunities based on the different structures. That's also one of the practice area. Educational structures like in primary school, secondary school, even in tertiary school, we can have some more of socialization of gender in a specific area. Economics, workplace and the business, and who are more income generating, and who are going to do this work and the classification and the differentiating of economic ra uh, rather than be make it generation of income is also different. And the other one is media, which can also socialize about these gender issues. So to make these um, issues to be resolved, as we said, as a nurturing of gender issues, we need to have gender mainstreaming. 
So for every country and for every specific communities, uh, like at the higher or at the lower, at the different levels, we need to have a policy, legislation, program, society, and the community development plans to make it benefit both men and women as a mainstreaming. And we have to ensure also, even though some of the areas they said they are, it is already mainstream. equal control and opportunities for at different levels so we have to ensure this one so if we say mainstreaming we have to look for these indicators are they equally access everything they want to do are they able to control over the resources they have and also are they utilize the opportunities and the benefits given for both sexes related to gender at all levels as expected and uh, makes also a program and the policy response to the social, economic, and the cultural critical reality. It is good if we advocate for gender issues for every political reality and economic social parties, and they make awareness and um, even starting from the family, how we are going to develop and rearing our children when they are male and the female that's also one of the strategies so in general we need to avoid gender blindness in development process so if you are not considering the gender still the practice is going to continue and the child's also having a difficulty to do that and uh, the final ultimate goal of this mainstreaming is to have gender equality so who are the decision makers when we are thinking about uh, gender mainstreaming always we have to know who are decision makers so how to make this decision making have to be equally shared among both male and the female and the mainstreaming as agenda what is it so what what was the gap we identified and what is the available gap is we need to address and uh, we have to set a goal and we have to work toward this that um, achieving that goal and uh, what information do we have what information do we need what in information do we uh, search again in addition to the information we have already we have to need map when we plan to do everything in related with gender and the most important thing it is expected to do research and analysis to identify the gaps and uh, the having an appropriate intervention for this gender mainstreaming, uh, having or conducting a research analysis conditions at the ground is very important. Uh, then we can formulate policy formula related with from starting from the evidences we are generating from the research and uh, the findings we have done as analysis and uh, always we need to think about gender matters we, need, we are we are not expected to be submissive and we are not expected to be accepting everything given related with the gender but in a reality and evidence-based way we need to argue that gender matters and uh, gender sensitivity analysis is also important we need to monitor all the time like once we say the as you also commented before about the gender institutions working in Ethiopia. So they are already established and uh, they have uh, recruited individuals who are working in the office, but they may not do as expected from that specific institution. So in that case, always we need to monitor what we have planned, what we have done, and what we need to change and what we need to improve always we need to monitor what we put in case of mainstreaming so at the end sometimes we need to also do an evaluation other than monitoring the activities and the plan so sometimes we need to evaluate where we are at the end of um, the program we are implementing based on our plan so again, we have to get into gender in communication, in gender in communication. That means uh, we have to communicate everyone to, to make it 
equal access for every center, every sex of uh, individuals, not based on that of the individual classification given. So this is all what we I have today. And if you have any questions. If you have any questions. Thank you very much, Masalach, for this uh, uh, great presentation. Uh, if there are questions, you're most welcome. If not, uh, let's take a 10 minutes uh, break. And then uh, we'll come back. I think now is uh, uh, almost 10.30. Let's uh, meet at 10.40 again. Uh, we'll share the recording uh, at the end of the sessions. Thank you. Thank you, Marcella, very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a good night. day. Okay, I think, Dr. Miron, have you shared this slide for that? Sorry? Have you shared this slide for them or shall I share it? No, no, I think if you share it on the Telegram group. Okay. I shared the one Dr. Mulu gave us during the TOT training. Have you shared that one already? Uh, the slide by Dr. Mulu, yes. Yes, it's I will share this one in addition yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very much. I'm 
Hello, Lily. Lily. Hello. Hello. Lily. Hello. Hello. 